ओम भूरभुव स्वह तवितूरवरेण्यम भर्गो दीवशी धियो यो नचोदया तो शांति 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 नमस्कार माय डियर फ्रेंड दिस इज वीडियो नंबर 19 ऑन भगवान श्री सत्य साई बाबाज डिवाइन डिस्कोर्सेज फॉर द डिवोटीज परशोइंग देयर साधना फॉर सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन एंड लीडिंग टू लिबरेशन दिस इज दिस वीडियो स्टार्ट्स विद डिस्कोर्स नंबर 32 एंड टॉपिक इज मेक अदर्स हैप्पी एजुकेशन इज एन ऑर्नामेंट फॉर मैन इट इज हिज सीक्रेट वेल्थ इट कन्फर्स प्रोस्पेरिटी एंड फेम इट इज द टीचर ऑफ टीचर्स इट इज वंस unfeeling kinsmen in foreign travel it secures the respect of rules more than wealth education is the basis for leading a purposeful life in the physical world in the realm of the mind and in society it equips one with mental strength and steadiness to face the challenges in life it enables one to understand the myriad manifestations in nature it is only when one understand the powers of his mind that he can recognize the relationship between the world and the society real education should enable one to realize what mankind is one family it should help one to experience the unifying forces in society unfortunately education today is not promoting these objectives we have no lack of intelligent men in the world today there are any number of society scientists it is because the intelligentsia and the scientist have not been educated on the fight lines that the world is plunged in chaos and disorder unity is essential for any achievement education today is concerned mainly with satisfying the senses and developing intellectual skills it ignores the development of virtuous qualities despite the committees and commissions set up by the government to suggest reforms in education no resolve no resolute efforts have been made to effect the necessary reforms the main reason for this failure is the lack of unity after achievement of freedom all the ills the nation is suffering from are due to the absence of unity and preoccupation of ephemeral objective there is nothing that cannot be achieved through unity education should promote discrimination and humility the quantitative explosion in the number of educational institutions schools colleges and universities has been accompanied by a corresponding decline in the quality of education to have no respect for your betters to be ungrateful to those who have fostered you to revile even the teacher who taught you can this be called progress in education there is little evidence of morality in society there is general decline in character and conduct bhartiya culture which laid emphasis on plain living and high thinking has been almost forgotten can there be anything more unfortunate for the country bharat which achieved great heights in every cultural sphere is today unaware of the magnitude of the greatness most students are not aware of even the meaning of culture culture refines the human spirit and makes one a complete human being today no attempt is made to understand the truth relating to the body the mind and the atma the culture of bharat 
Culture seeks to integrate the various aspects of daily life and develop a unified outlook. It should enable one to transcend the divisions of caste, creed and community and realize the divine unity that underlies the apparent diversity. Students should realize that Bharatiya culture is not meant only for Bharat but is meant for all mankind to reveal to the world the path to path to the divine. Today one finds that the virtues exhibited by illiterate villagers and uneducated folk in the tribal areas are not to be seen among the educated urban population. In fact, wherever schools, courts and administrative offices have multiplied, there we witness an increased corruption, injustice and wickedness. In seeking to lead a free and unrestrained life, people are falling prey to the desires of their senses. Educational institutions which should be heavens of peace and serenity are haunted by fears of insecurity. The true aim of education is to prepare the student for a useful role in society with the help of the knowledge he has got and for leading an ideal life. Science and technology have made great advances in recent years and have a prominent place in education. It is true that science has helped to improve the conditions of living, but the harm it is doing outweighs the benefits. Man has lost peace of mind and the sense of security. The growth of videos, radios, television, cinemas and air travel has been stupendous. Misuse of science and technology but there is no sign in any growth in divine vision with the result that daily life is becoming more precarious morality and justice have declined this must be ascribed mainly to the craze for acquiring modern scientific gadgets many middle class people who have moderate incomes wish to acquire motor vehicles, TV sets and the likes which they cannot afford to buy from their regular incomes. This leads to corruption and bribery. Even education has become expensive and far beyond the means of middle class earners. In addition, there is a tendency to show off before others to appear to be better off than one really is. This kind of Ostentation is another cause of fall in moral standards among lawyers, doctors and other professional people. There is nothing wrong with sciences as such. It is the way it is used that produces bad consequences. In the reform of the educational system, it is necessary to ensure that students learn about the right use of science. True education must enable one to gain Atma Jnana, realization of the self. Instead of emphasizing this need, modern education creates many problems and difficulties for the students. Acquiring a small fragment of knowledge, a student gets inflated notions of himself. With this sort of conceit, he develops a contempt for Bharatiya culture. This is not what true education should aim at. Education should be divorced from job hunting. Its primary purpose should enable the educated person to lead an honorable and meaningful life in society. If one cannot command respect in society, of what value is his education? Education should make a man recognize his obligation to his parents and others who have made him what he is. Gratitude is a supreme virtue. If one cannot be grateful to his parents, his education is a waste. Dear students, in the pursuit of your studies, you must place the interest of the nation above your personal interest. If you wish to maintain the greatness of Bharatiya culture, you should fully understand its sacredness and sublimity. 
Bharat's prosperity will last only as long as its culture is preserved. Bharat will cease to be Bharat if its culture is lost. Consider this hoary culture as your life breath and as the blood flowing in your veins. The receiving of a degree is not the end of education. Your education will be worthwhile only when you lead exemplary lives in the service of society. Duty of the Educated In ancient days, high value was attached to education, and the students led simple lives. Their clothes and their manners were dignified. Today, such simplicity and dignity are not to be seen among students or teachers generally. Discipline is at a discount. More than ever, it is essential for educated persons today to conduct themselves as men of honor and integrity and raise the moral level of the society. Even in pursuing the spiritual path, the process should not be from nature to spirit or God, but from spirit or God to nature. By seeking to master the forces of nature through education, people tend to become subjects of nature, live up to the institution's motto, Satyam Vada, Dharmam Chara, speak the truth, be righteous. These injunctions are not properly understood. Adhering to truth means living up to transcendental truth, which is the eternal verity that is true for all times, past, present and future. Dharma does not mean living as you, as you please. The aim of education should be to serve the nation. The bonds of love that existed between the Gurus and the disciples in the past do not exist today between teachers and students. The Guru considered it his, his duty to teach the disciple what was most beneficial for the latter and the disciple loved to render service to the Guru and carry out implicitly his commands. In those days, the students were few and they received intensive instruction. Today, the students are numerous and education is diluted. Full reaching reforms are needed in the educational system today. The future progress and welfare of the nation depend upon how education is imparted. Students must be imbued with genuine patriotism, starting with love and reverence for the parents. Students should cultivate love and reverence for the motherland. All, you, all your education must be a preparation for serving the nation. Broaden your vision. Cultivate the spirit of love. Being endowed with human form, you must strive to develop human values and not stray away from the path of righteousness. Fill your minds with sublime thoughts and your hearts with divine feelings. Consider the entire society as your home. Only then you will realize genuine unity with all. Redeem your lives by receiving, by revering your parents, honoring your teachers and developing a loving faith in God. In this way, you can lead dedicated lives in the spirit of the injunctions of the Upanishad. Be aware of the divinity that is inherent in every being. Thereby you will grow in your own self-esteem. Fill your life with joy. Be happy, be happy, make others happy. All will be happy, God will be happy. Benedictory address of Bhagwan Baba As Chancellor of the Satya Sai Institute of Higher Learning to the 7th Convocation of the Institute, 22nd November 
1988 man is the embodiment of satyam shivam and sundaram and it will call on all to live up to that glory he has to realize the truth and demonstrate in thought word and deed that truth is the very basis of his existence this course number 33 topic learn the conscience rule more effulgent than the sun wider than the purest snow subtler than the subtlest ether immanent in all living beings there is nothing in the cosmos sense brahma the parmatma is present in the minutest particle being in everything that remains unaffected that universal consciousness illumines and sustains the three worlds pervading everything in creation that brahma you are and brahma is in you you and the brahma are not different what greater truth can i tell you good people who are gathered here i am in the light i am the light the light is in me the light is me he who is aware of this is brahma himself and brahma is he embodiments of the divine atma only a human being can understand god in the human form not others as the human form itself should be respected devam manushya rupena it is said god reveals himself in the human form god assumed the human form to make his advent in the world teach humanity the path to divinity and shower his grace on them man and the divine in human form man and the divine in human form the whole of nature is a ball of burning fire energy this is fi- this fire is present inside and outside likewise the divine atma principle is present everywhere the divine dwells in the entire universe from the minute atom to the vastest star this divine power is present in everything in creation only man has the capacity to recognize this power but in trying to recognize it he may create some crude form and consider it as the divine in his delusion today one can give an amazing scientific discourse on the world society and many other things one may appear logically convincing he may even expound in different ways the nature of the divine in human form all these are however only products of the imagination and not the truth an eloquent pandit may be attempt may attempt to describe the divine but no one has known or can know the true nature of the divine in its fullness man alone can know the divine in human form no one else can see it or explain it in any other form all other expositions of the divine are speculative and fanciful an elephant may wish to worship the divine basing itself on its nature it can conceive of the divine only as a huge elephant it cannot conceive of any other form even a mouse when it conceives of the divine can only imagine the titanic form of a mouse as the divine likewise man can conceive god only in the human form as long as the as long as he regards himself only in human terms man cannot conceive of god who transcends the human except in human form pandits description of god create only confusion a learned and eloquent scholar may describe god in many ways some scholars describe god as aprameya avagamanasa gochara athita nirguna one who is inscrutable beyond the reach of the speech and mind transcendent and attributeless all these terms are high sounding but in essence they are just prot meanings may be given to these terms and elaborate 
annotations can be made about them but they are valueless in terms of the personal experience and are fraught with danger they do not represent the reality whenever you get a convenient opportunity put this question to a pandit what is the meaning of aprameya he will answer that he is one who is not amenable to any logical proof likewise he may explain that the term avang mansa gochara refers to one who is not recognizable by speech or mind but beyond this can he demonstrate the form of the divine in my mind the layman's conception of god is better than the description offered by these pandits because these terms can be used even by laymen but they prefer to remain silent as a result there is peace in society the diverse interpretations offered by the pandits give rise to divisions and confusions in society these disturb the minds of the people rather than provoke such disturbance and confusion it would be better for these pandits to observe silence from ancient times to the present all kinds of terms have been used to describe the divine but no one has been able to demonstrate the real truth about the divine the divine is present in all things and all forms are his how can such an omnipresent divine be described or demonstrated can anyone declare that something is brahma and something else is not brahma only the deluded may do so out of human weakness appearances and reality are different divinity is present in men like fragrance is present in a flower fire in wood and oil in sea some not visible but latent unaware of this inner truth men are carried away by external appearances and consider them as the reality from early times men have been influenced by such ideas and have been steeped in ignorance they offer milk to and ant hills to feed the cobras which are believed to dwell in them but kill snakes when they see them they torture the drought cattle that they use in cultivation but worship the stone image of a bull the sacred vehicle of shiva this is the kind of philosophy that people have practiced since ancient times causing harm to the living and adoring inanimate objects have been weak traits among the bhartiya jats men who do not offer even a morsel of food to a starving man will offer all kinds of delicacies as nevedya sacred offering to the image of the deity one will drop a bundle of coins in the hundi donation collection box of sri venkateshwara but will refuse a small pitens to the beggar all this is regarded as part of one ancient tradition but how much sanctified will one be if he offers food to a starving man it is essential to realize the basic truth that god is present in the form of human beings is one doing the duty if he inflicts pain on the jiva a living being and offer worship to deva the divine avatars are based on different aspects of the divine in the world god has descended as a human incarnation in five different forms these forms are based on the different aspects of the divine one is nitya avatar second is vishesh avatar third av avesha avatar fourth leela avatar fifth purna avatar leela avatar is also known as amsha avatar nitya avatar vishesh avatar and avesha avatar have only five to nine kalas aspects of the lord only in the purna avatar are all 16 aspects of the divine present
the ancient regarded only the purna avatara as the full manifestation of god in this context every human being must be deemed as avatara as he has some aspect of the divine in him it is because he has descended from the divine he is entitled to be called an avatar except as avatar god does not give a separate vision of the divine to man in any other form honor every human being show love towards every person love is not a crop that can be grown on land or a commodity that can be purchased in a shop whether one is a potentate or a commoner only when he gives up egoistic pride and is ready to make sacrifice will love bloom within him embark on the journey towards god realization do not be weighed down by the feeling that the human estate is weak and subject to delusions and ignorance it is not easy to born as a human being if nevertheless one does not realize his true nature and imagine that god is in the external world it is the mark of utter ignorance hence without wasting time engage yourself in your duties and embark on the journey towards god realization if you want to worship god worship him in the human form alone all other forms are artificial and creation of the imagination they are products of delusion while brahma delusion remains brahma cannot be experienced numerous persons are describing god in many fold many fold ways the scriptures also describe god in many ways the expounders are content with reciting the descriptions but do not seek to experience that divine what is the form of the divine if you wish to see the divine the form you envisages will be only a caricature consider your own form as manifestation of the divine esteem yourself as divine respect others love yourself and love others this is true worship it is because this broad minded attitude to the divine was not promoted from early times man has been a prey to all forms of ignorance there is no such thing as god descending on earth or leaving it the body is like a water bubble which arises grows and disappears in the water this is the truth man is born from brahma grows through brahma and merges in brahma brahma means freedom from bharma delusion it is the it is because of delusion that brahma is not experienced man is dominated by the delusions of ahankara and mamkara ego and possessiveness in what form can you worship the divine whose form is cosmic what is that you can offer to the one who is everything the world has worshiped him under different names rama krishna allah jorastar buddha and sai baba but all these names represent the one atma true worship consists in regarding all the forms as one and worshiping the divine in the atma divine in the form of love and truth it is subtler than a sub atomic particle that's why it is said truth is more fundamental than the atom so i stop this video here and the next video will start with the topic let conscience rule your actions thank you for watching this video namaskar